Graying hair is just another natural part of aging, and we tend to think our options are just to leave it, cover it with dye, or use a halfway house as I do with hair highlights. But what if there are natural ways to slow it down and even reverse some of the graying? Well, while genetics play a big part in our level and speed of graying, so does lifestyle. Small human studies have shown, for instance, that periods of stress can accelerate graying, with some reversal then seen in study participants in periods where they were relaxed. And we now know that nutrition and nutritional deficiencies can play a significant role too. Today, I'm talking to Los Angeles-based trichologist and hairstylist to the stars, Jay Small. He believes it's possible in some cases to reverse graying and slow down the progression as we age. He's a co-founder of RA Grey, which creates supplements and topical products to help us achieve this. And today we're gonna to discuss the causes of graying, the worst thing you can do when you start showing signs of gray, the stage of graying where you have the best chance with natural interventions, the impact lifestyle and dietary changes can make, plus a free tip for preserving hair color and condition that had somehow never occurred to me before. Well, Jay, thank you so much for joining me all the way in Los Angeles. I, I bet it's sunny there today. Is it sunny? I'm going to be honest, it's not. It's been overcast here, and that's what it does this time of year. And it'll get sunny later, that we're okay with that. As long as it's not raining, my guess is, is great. Well, we have the rain for you here. Uh, I'm in Edinburgh in Scotland, and we get a lot of that. We've had thunderstorms today, so who knows what might happen. I would love to start, Jay, with just your story of, of how you got into hair care and trichology. Mm -hmm. Well, it was it was pretty um, it was uh, kind of a survival story. Uh, I used to be a carpenter uh, in New Jersey, and I built a deck for someone who owned a hair salon. And he told me one day that I looked more like a hairstylist than a construction worker. <laughs> and so I went to his beauty salon that was in New Jersey, and it was a great space. And, um, you know, I walked in and there was this great energy. There was beautiful people, you know, happiness, music, and most importantly, air conditioning, because it was a summertime that I had been working for him. And um, I was 17 at the time. And it was really very, you know, it kind of drew me in. And I was really fortunate to then um, meet the owner of the company, Paul Mitchell, uh, oh, a, wow. a couple of years later, and then ended up becoming his apprentice. His name is Angus Mitchell. Um, and so, you know, that taught me about education and product development. And then, you know, cut to 15 years later, I have a client that sits in my chair who I've been working with for years, sees her first gray hair, like many people, wants to know what the options are. Um, as a very proactive person and a very inquisitive person, my co-founder, Allison Conrad, she, you know, said, I don't really want to color your hair or color my hair. Uh, and, and I said, you know, I don't think you should color your hair too soon. And so it was this element of, well, what can we do proactively similar to the wrinkle creams that she might have been using or the SPFs? And so we found that there was really nothing within preservation of pigment and healthy hair beyond hair loss. So that's kind of how we got into this place. And then once the company started as a hairstylist, I always wanted to know more about these questions and, and know what research did exist. And so I, I studied trichology for the last two years. And uh, to be completely fair, there was about one and a half pages on gray hair. And it said, for the most part, it's complicated. So that's where we really wanted to dig in and focus on the research and the science behind what we can help people understand better and, and use as products. So you said there, graying is complicated. I mean, what do we know about the causes of gray hair? Because I'm thinking there's got to be at least some genetic component in there because there's these people who can sometimes go completely white in their 20s as their father or mother before them did. And you can see that running through families. What are the causes? When we started, we everybody assumed that it was genetics. And to be fair, there's actually only one gene that causes and is linked to going gray. It's the IRF4 gene. And so just to make a comparison when it comes to hair loss, there are several hundred genetic compositions that can you know, lead to thinning, loss, pattern baldness, things like that. So yes, you very well might see, you know, a person go gray, similar to how their parent did, but there's also similarities in the lifestyle. So 
beyond that one genetic composition that can cause this, things like sun exposure, diets, um, other oxidative stressors like smoking or alcohol, mm. these lifestyle uh, factors are typically passed down, right? So in a lot of cases, if you had someone who, you know, was really in the sun as a, as a kid a bunch and then maybe was exposed to people that, you know, drank very casually or often, you know, and didn't eat particularly healthy foods, you have these other lifestyle factors that are potentially weighing in. And then as you get into your 20s or 30s, the body then starts to slow down the production of pigment because you have to keep in mind that hair is a superfluous tissue. It doesn't need hair. It wants hair. So, you know, beyond that, you know, we, we, that's where, when we found that there was only this one gene, we were like, well, what are the other factors that we can help people either supplement or combat uh, specifically when it comes to oxidative stressors they may have been exposed to. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds uh, quite like skin aging, the way you describe it there with those kind of multiple factors and lifestyle being such a big part of it. And I think I read as well, which scared me a bit, because as soon as the grey hairs started coming in for me, I um, started getting my hair highlighted, which I do quite regularly now. And I can tell that it hasn't helped the condition of my hair. It's quite dry and unruly. Just before you were coming on the call, I was desperately, as I normally do, trying to just hold the thing down, you know, pin it down. Um, I think I read you say that that can actually worsen graying. <laughs> well, actually, there is a very, you know, so you are actually doing the, what we would recommend as a treatment. Okay. Because when you're, when you're highlighting your hair, you're putting the color into foils mm -hmm. and you're basically incubating that product. A lot of people, when they see their first gray hairs, they resort to using uh, hair dye to cover the grays, and that typically happens on the scalp. Right? So yes, so the foils, when, the when if you're getting foils on your hair, it's not quite touching the scalp. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. That's 100% okay. right. Got it. And that is really, that's the recommended way because A, you're only co cover, coloring or covering specific areas right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they see their first gray, they start to color it and they're putting more color on their head than they do have gray to cover. Mm -hmm. And then this creates a lot of chemical exposure on the scalp, which can be uh, uh, causing hair to go more gray, you know, thin out over time. And that's what we want people to understand is maybe the not the, the first step that you should take. Uh, it doesn't mean that we don't have people that use hair dye. Um, but we want people to realize that hair dye should be used, um, you know, with a little bit of caution, right? It's a, it's a very volatile chemical that we sometimes then end up using every four to six weeks for the remainder of our lives mm. or until we, you know, want to keep our hair reserved as we, as we have. So. And I mean, what else happens to our hair? We know about graying and we know about thinning. Um, but a lot of us, you know, among the women and the viewers and so on, on my channel, will talk about the kind of your hair getting frizzier, drier, more unruly, as I've been describing. I mean, does that that obviously comes with age to some degree? Yeah. So you know, um, we'll we'll do a little bit of uh, hair anatomy for a second. So the hair has several layers to it. it. Has the outside layer, which is the cuticle, and that can be best described like the scales on a snake. They all go in the same direction. So if you were to go against that, they would all stand up. That's what happens when we get frizzy hair or kind of unruly hair. Mm -hmm. uh, in that same way, in the interior of the hair strand, you have, you know, uh, you have fats and you have, you know, um, humectants and moisture and, and, you know, all this other, you know, mass color being one of that color molecules being one of that. So as we start to lose color molecules, or we start to lose some of that fat that built, uh, you know, built the hair strand into a healthy way, um, you all of a sudden see the decrease in mass of the hair strand, which will cause the cuticle to stand on end. Best way to describe that is kind of like a balloon that loses air. When a balloon loses air, it loses structure, it becomes a little bit more less smooth, right? Mm -hmm. And so as our hair strand loses these kind of components, it will become more coarse, potentially more dry, more brittle. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we also have to, you know, take steps 
to either not over cleanse our hair, right? We don't want to remove extra oils, um, but also equally use products that absorb into the hair strand and fill it back up as opposed to traditional conditioners that might sit on the outside and weigh it mm -hmm. down. So, so it's, yeah, it's about, you know, we, we look at it two ways, future hair growth, how can we preserve pigment and preserve hair health? But then we also have people that have that textural change. The difference between men and women's hair as we age, I mean, obviously men are more prone to what is now called male pattern baldness. Is that just a hormonal thing? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. male pattern baldness, um, you know, what I learned through my trichology uh, certification was it is it is traditionally when it comes to pattern baldness is traditionally associated with hormonal imbalance. Mm -hmm. And that hormonal imbalance just means that you either have more testosterone, less progesterone or less estrogen. And so when you have more testosterone, whether you're male or female, that is going to convert into something called DHT. And DHT finds its way to the hair follicle and over time slowly suffocates it or slowly um, minimizes it. And so that's where hair will start to thin. And then ultimately, you know, you won't have a hair strand that grows back in that place. That's what pattern baldness is. So because of that, you know, women might experience this post-menopause, you know, or, you know, they might experience it um, at different times. Like you might see some change around puberty and then some change around the time where you start to have your children mm -hmm. and then, you know, post-menopausal, uh, whereas men might, you know, have this kind of uh, genetic buildup of testosterone and it could start in their 20s, 30s, mm. all the way into their 40s and 50s. If we take graying hair, uh, which is the main focus of our conversation, it, what what's the science uh, behind preventing and even reversing gray hair? Because re reversing gray hair seems like a stretch, but how is that possible? Mm. Well, so one of the words that we really try and focus on is called repigmentation. So mm -hmm. for us, it was about adopting a new word that actually kind of gave um, uh, gave science a bit of a, a backing within the word. So reversing, we, we want to try and steer clear of that because what we found over our research was that there is a difference between a white hair and a gray hair or a graying hair. A lot of times, like if you look at me through this podcast right now, the hairs that you can see kind of visibly here from this far away, we would call them gray, but they are likely white. They have likely lost all pigments and they would be you know, just, you know, most recognizable, similar to like a deeper wrinkle, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas a fine line, <laughs> yeah, which are hard to shift. Whereas if you had a fine line and you started to see that up close in the mirror and you applied some creams and some serums, adjusted your diet, you might be able to prevent that going to a deeper wrinkle. Well, these white hairs, when we go up close with the with a microscope, we will see hairs around them that are depigmenting that are slowly losing pigment. So going from like a full brown to a light brown, to a blonde, to a, you know, a dark gray, all the way to a white. And what happens is if there's still pigment left in that strand, even the smallest iota, that means that we can re-stimulate the pigment production in that hair follicle. So for us, repigmentation, there has to be some pigment left in the hair strand. And that's where we try and adopt some of the, you know, the ways in which people use, you know, wrinkle creams and these preventative skincare measures, like you said, because it is about preserving what you have, less being able to magically kind of reverse or bring back all the pigment that we've lost. And how would we be able to tell if, if our hairs are gray or white? Yeah. So I, I've heard a lot of people say over the years, when it comes to sitting in my chair as clients, my hair feels dull. My hair feels kind of mousy. My hair feels kind of, I don't know, just kind of flat, right? That's depigmentation. So what happens is, is our hair as we get to, again, there's really no age associated with going gray or white, but there are certain things that we notice. Our skin gets a little bit drier. So the same way, we wanna to start to look at some of these factors with our hair color overall and these these characteristics so what i've noticed is is that that's the point in which our hair might be going from 100 percent pigment 
to 90% pigment or 80% pigment. And so that is it slowly losing it. And that's when it would be a really ideal time. Instead of getting a toner done or doing some type of a, a, a conditioning treatment, this is the time in which we really want people to start taking proactive steps to kind of preserve the pigment that they have. Now, the other way is with a white hair, if you look in the mirror and you can kind of see it from across the, you know, across the counter like that, that is likely a white hair strand. What I would want people to do is go really close to that and look around. You will see something that looks blonde, lighter brown in comparison to your darker brown. That is definitely the best way to, to, to see the difference. Yeah. When my when I started getting white hairs coming in here, I was in denial. I just started plucking them. And then I thought, I'm going to have no hair left at the front if I keep going like this. So I just had to get the highlighting in. <laughs> that's right. And and that's the thing is, is that I think for me, uh, what I've noticed is as a hairstylist, I was always really reluctant to tell people that they had what I would call gray then or white because the solution was to color it. And that was kind of a selfish solution because mm -hmm. that puts money in my pocket as a hairstylist. So I also think, you know, equally your girlfriend, your husband, friends in your life aren't going to come up to you and be like, hey, by the way, you got some whites there. Because it's it's not really something that if you don't have a solution to offer them, right? Yeah. Instead, oh, wow, you know, I've, I've got this great skin, you know, cream that I've, I've been using and it does this, this and this. It's like, so that's where we really want to open the conversation up. And we want people to adopt this earlier and also feel comfortable to kind of share that they are using something because mm -hmm. the goal is, is that you don't see white or you don't see gray. You kind of preserve what you have, knowing that we're all going to age and mm -hmm. these signs similar to skin are going to present themselves at some point, just varying ages. Yeah. And I mean, we'll, we'll get into um, some of the solutions available, but I think that is an important point because as I'm sitting here, I think, oh, this is very much like the conversations I have around skin. And sometimes I feel guilty because we're talking about anti-aging solutions for skin. And you think, where is the line? Where is the balance? We can't all be in denial and, you know, trying to sort of um, laser off every single wrinkle because the inevitable happens. And um, it's the same with hair. I mean, some people really embrace their graying hair. My mum's hair has gone completely white and looks fabulous because it is that uniform white and she stopped dyeing it and, and it looks great. Um, but I think probably most of us will recognize there is that awkward period of time where you've just got, you've got streaks, you've got strands, and, you know, it's, it's to have some kind of more natural solution, I think is, is a bit more appealing. And, and like skin, I always look at it like, I'm not trying to roll back the years. What I'm trying to do is make the most of the years I have now and look and feel as good as I can for that time. And so we're sort of, we're delaying and, um, yeah. you know, just keeping ourselves as, as kind of vibrant as we can for as long as we can basically and i also found too i mean a big part of this was the psychological effect of um addressing you know graying hair or, or hair that's turned white with hair dye um you know because you have this very short cycle the cycle that i saw with people was i would put color on their head and it would almost be a little bit too dark or uniform yeah. color so it feels fake and then it goes through like maybe a couple of weeks where you like it and then the root starts to come in and that's so aging. When you see people with really dark dyed hair and these really light roots, it's so aging. That's right. And that's the thing that people don't realize. If mm. that root was all of this, it wouldn't look odd. Exactly. It wouldn't stop people in their tracks. Mm. The same way that like if this here, you know, and again, you're using a highlight, using a low light, that's fine. You know, that's the equivalent of putting some blush on your cheeks or a little bit of eyeliner on. You see, these are mo these are these are moderate changes. These aren't drastic changes. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times when it comes to hair care, we we kind of go extreme. Yeah. Um, and we're very reactive. And we need to, you know, realize that like, okay, our hair, our scalp has a pretty big job, even more than the skin on our face, because it has to not only, you know, you know, be this kind of protective layer, but it also has to prosper and and grow 
this material that we want to look and feel youthful and healthy. And so if we are trying to look youthful and healthy, but putting these chemicals on constantly, it's going to over time, like, you know, maybe even with your mom, had she, you know, that white is great. And, but it's likely at the, at the cause of potentially using hair dye for a long time, mm -hmm. because it's a lot of chemicals you put on there mm -hmm. and you've just, you've gotten rid of all the color, which is great in the end result. Um, but some people could see that as hair thinning or, or deterioration in their texture over time. Yeah, yeah. And she has certainly had um, hair thin thinning as well along the way. Um, so what did you discover when you looked into the solutions? What are the most effective solutions if we want to stop graying in its tracks and, and maybe even restore some of the pigmentation in our hair? Yeah. So we actually, for, for us, it started with a supplement. And that was because we had put together a medical team. So we had an internal medicine doctor, chemical engineer from MIT, and a dietitian. And um, uh, well, to be fair, at the time, there was only four studies, count them four, mm -hmm. in history on gray hair, two of which dated back to 1940. So what we had looked at is, is, is um, situations in which people had been studied for other things, whether it was a vitamin deficiency or some type of other illness, and they had purported some type of graying or premature graying. And so we were able to make links between these vitamin and mineral deficiencies and this other sign of aging, this, this graying hair. So that was the first piece. And then we looked into, um, you know, Eastern medicine and saw that there was a lot of antioxidants because the other side to this was we are overexposed to sun exposure, chemicals, even the reason why we go gray on our front hairline, it's the overlap of chemicals potentially from, you know, your, your face wash to your shampoo, to your toners, to your makeup, to your, you know, layer on, layer on, layer on. And so we realized antioxidants were a big part of that. Eastern medicine has been using antioxidants for centuries. So traditional Chinese medicine played a part in um, our proprietary formula for the supplement. Mm -hmm. So the supplement's called Not Today Gray. It is vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. It's formulated to be used with a multivitamin. Um, and it's really about creating an uh, opportunity for cell turnover, red blood cell flow to the hair follicle, and also will help to stimulate melanin production in the hair follicle with these um, certain antioxidants and vitamins. And what we found is, is that people, as we age, you know, we go into like college years and then, you know, our 20s, all of a sudden we're on like a juice cleanse thinking that this is healthy. This is healthy for our physique, but it's not healthy for our vitamin and minerals that we need to put into the body. The body also becomes less efficient with these vitamins and minerals. So started with the supplement. If you really want to, uh, everybody can really use and benefit from a supplementation because whether you're getting the vitamins and minerals that you need, you're likely not eating enough blueberries to counteract the free radicals uh, needed to, you know, um, kind of make the body function healthy. Yeah, what are the key vitamins that affect um, hair, do you think? So complex of B vitamins, B12, B6, um, copper is a, a great mineral for this. Um, and, you know, again, it depends on each individual person. Um, but the goal is, is that you're trying to um, make it so that you... Uh, How's the best way to say this? You're trying to make it so that you have an even amount in the body that the body can use to kind of push this forward. Um, so it's nothing that is, you know, you wouldn't access through eating avocados or salmon or, you know, a healthy diet. It's just that likely we, you know, aren't eating enough meals in the day and we're not putting enough of a well-rounded meal into that specific diet. So that's yeah. the best way. That's the best way to describe it. Um, I mean, going back to my mum, she had a very severe uh, vitamin B twelve deficiency. So she is treated. She gets a a shot every eight weeks um, from her doctor. It's turned her life around. Um, but whether that is connected with the white hair or not, I don't know. But it's interesting because she had a very. It was very severe. Yeah. No. And I, and that's where you know I think um, we when we when we first started this, it was really more like, oh, wait, I have early whites. What mm -hmm. if I saw that as a message from the body, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to something that was a vanity play, like even if we just tw twisted it, what could it be telling me about what am I lacking within my nutrients or what am I overexposed to from oxidative stress? 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, believe it or not, smoking cigarettes in your 20s and, you know, it, it plays a huge effect on what you are experiencing now in my 30s. And so it was about, you know, you know, kind of looking at that and also looking at my diet and being like, well, I, I intermittent fast, I really wasn't eating enough vegetables, you know? And so, you know, that then leads us to a place where we need to balance out. And that's where for some people it might take effect and show great results within the first, you know, two months. And for some people it might take four months because we need to not only, you know, give the body back this supply, but also when it comes to getting rid of free radicals, free radicals are like damaged cells in our body. They're like a little brown spot on a piece of a fruit, right? They will continue to spread over time, but the more of those that we have in the body, then the more that the antioxidants have to go in and neutralize them. And then once that is in a healthy place, that's what's going to help uh, our cells kind of um, prosper, turn over and proliferate in a way that is healthy skin, healthy hair, pigmented hair. So you feel that um, tackling it from within is the kind of the the bedrock of the approach that's going to have the biggest effect, would you say, rather than topically? Yes, that is going to have the biggest effect. And then we, we have something called the system. So we combine it with our topical serum. But we do we do want people to realize whether you are taking our product or not, that if you wanted to, because I know you're, I liked your last question. If I if I wasn't going to invest in the supplement, what could I do? Hmm. The main thing I would do is, is evaluate your diet, and that would be, you know, eating enough food in a day, eating a well-rounded diet. We actually put together a chart um, on our site, and I'll send it to you on the side. But it's basically like what you'd have to eat in a day just to consume the appropriate vitamins. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, you know, the question I always get asked is, what is that? Well, eggs and avocados. If you could eat eggs and avocados in a day and then look into some type of an antioxidant, that is going to be really helpful. It's not going to be as efficient, but it's going to be really helpful um, relative to the baseline where you're at now. Yeah, sure. Um, And so topically, what is in the um, shampoos and conditioners that can help hair? Okay. So with the topical when we started to research that there is um, an ingredient that we found that is a peptide and this peptide is basically been shown within uh, research studies to um, be able to stimulate melanin production in the hair follicle the way that it does this is it provides amino acids to the hair follicle and it basically if you think of amino acids amino acids are like a building block so if your kid was playing legos and they wanted to build you know a huge tall skyscraper they only had a little pile of legos they're not going to get that high so the same thing happens in our hair follicle if we do not have enough amino acids then we do not have enough to kind of build together these molecules which either give us our hair strand or the pigment that is inside of the hair strand so this was the center of this topical formulation but what we had to figure out was Um, there's two things in the way. One is skin so that we need to figure out absorption. And then two was there's a bunch of free radicals that are built up throughout the different layers of the skin. So our topical is called to the root. So we have antioxidants. We have um, other antioxidants that are helpful for absorption. And then at the base of that is this clinically effective peptide. And so what we really pride ourselves on is what we eliminated. So there's no oil, there's no scent, Um, And the key for this is, is that it is something that you can use every day. It won't build up on your hair, but it will effectively absorb into the scalp. And then as it goes in, it gets rid of any free radicals that are topical or subdermal. And then it will allow for these amino acids to access the hair follicle. And hopefully if you're taking the supplements, you have the fuel from the body to then kind of work in tandem with these amino acids. And and I know that it, sounds like a big story, but that that's kind of the inside out, the outside. Found. And is that is the peptide palmitoyl tetrapeptide? Am I pronouncing that? Yes, it is. Okay. And what have the studies shown around that? Because I mean, people will always want to know what is the what's the evidence? Has it been tested in a clinical yes. study? Yeah. So palmitoyl tetrapeptide actually has several studies associated with it. You know singularly on its own for its ability to stimulate melanogenesis, mm-hmm. uh, which is the which is what is melanin production, and then in combination uh, with other ingredients. And it is actually under clinical review right now by us as a company. So we have a 150 person double blind placebo controlled study happening right now, which takes into account 
four arms. One, the topical on its own. Two, the supplement on its own. Three, both together. And then four, a placebo group of, of nothing at all. Um, and, and, and that's really important because people always ask, like, what would happen if I did nothing? We wanted to know the rate at which someone would go gray. That'll be published in August of this year. So we can kind of share those results. But for us, palmitoyl tetrapeptide was the most studied peptide that was on the market. It had been around for many years, actually. It just hadn't had a vehicle um, that was most efficient and that people would use on a regular basis because without consistency, it, it won't really have the results that are necessary uh, based on the study findings. I'm just trying to get a feel for what proportion of customers you think um, see results. So, I mean, going right back to just a lifestyle alone, do you think a radical change in lifestyle and people supplementing with um, the kind of vitamins that we discussed there and eating the kind of diet that we discussed there, could see a difference in their hair from that alone, in the pigmentation of their hair, just through lifestyle? I think they could see a, what I would, what I would probably say is, is that, you know, if you're like, you know, sometimes we feel like we are, we're aging a little faster, whether that's because we're tired or our skin just looks a little bit kind of deteriorated. Mm. So what I would say is, is that, first of all, you're going to you know, from the inside out, you're going to feel a little bit better. You're going to have a little bit more energy and that's going to, that's going to change the way in which you see yourself. So there's, there's that psychological element. And then I would say that, you know, the slowing of progression of aging would likely be associated with that change. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to proliferating or bringing pigment back to life or, you know, that, that's when you're going to want to use something topically or something that is, a little bit more specifically focused. And honestly, for that, it's the antioxidants, probably more than anything else. It's just, I, I don't know that people would be able to access as much antioxidants as ne as needed based on the environments. In which so a topical approach is also needed alongside the supplements for pigmentation. That's what I mean. Listen, so some people will see pigmentation with just the supplement alone. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is, is that if someone were to, I thought your question was, if someone were to just do a lifestyle change and eat healthier, they're going to yeah. want to have something topically there. And what proportion of customers do you think if they try the whole works um, would see a difference in their hair? Is this something that can work for everybody if they are the right candidate or as there usually are with anti-aging devices, is that and the next thing there always seems to be a group for whom it just doesn't work. That is true. And I, you know, I think a lot of that is based on expectation. Mm -hmm. You know, what I find is, is that we actually, me and my co-founder, we, we personally respond to um, every review that comes in, whether it's good or bad. And so, you know, a lot of times the people that are reaching out and saying it didn't work, their expectation was for something really magical to happen. And it's not, and, and that's, and that's not their fault, you know, because we all see an Instagram advertisement, we read the website. And for us, we try and help people understand what's going to happen. But mm -hmm. a lot of times there is a, you know, a group of us that still don't really see the difference between gray and white. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll get sent a photo and we have a little chart on our site that's zero, mm -hmm. five, 10%, right? Well, sometimes people are actually 40% white. And they don't realize that that's not going to change. Now, you still have 60% color, but what I think their expectation was, was that it would be 30%, 20% and go onward. And then to your other side, yes, there are going to be people that are just genetically dis, you know, disposed to, you know, they basically what happens is when you have the genetic composition, you lack tyrosine. Um, in the, in the body. And yeah, there are going to be some people that have that as well. But what we are noticing is, is that, you know, if you start early and you have the right expectation, there is actually a surprising amount of people that have great results because the result is either preserving what you have, changing the texture so that the texture feels better. Because even if you still have that white hair, what we found is, is that we need products that actually make that white hair look and feel its best. So, you know, it's um, it's hard to say a specific number of people that it will or will not work for. I think for us, it's about making sure that those who do choose to start are starting with the right 
expectation, you know, and at the right time and, you know. Yeah, have the right kind of customer profile that it's not too far gone. I'm now thinking about <laughs> some of the ways that I can sort out my frizzy locks. But um, yes, I'm never short of a supplement or two. For those viewers who are watching, who are thinking, it all sounds great, um, but I can't afford any of this. What would you say to them to do with their hair topically? We've talked about the supplements, but what, what are some of the best things that we could do that are you know really inexpensive that people can just do day to day? Yeah, um, the first thing is 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 wear a hat. <clears throat> Sorry, wear, wear a, a hat. hat. Uh huh. Yes, okay. because we don't realize that that whether it's an overcast day, you know, and or full sun, that sun exposure is the biggest source of oxidative stress. And we 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 would we would put sunscreen here. We don't really put sunscreen here. I don't think about protecting my hair from the sun. That's, That's right. That's right. So yeah. put a hat on. That's the number one thing that you can do that doesn't cost much of anything. Mm. Um, and But then also just think about your diet in a way that has variation and consistency. You know, I think those are the two things, you know, like even simply adding in an avocado once a day or a few eggs or some spinach, you know, these things, that's what we have to do. We have to not be so routine oriented when it comes to our diet. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other side would be, is, you know, prioritizing foods that do have some type of antioxidant. And thankfully, a lot of these antioxidants come in vehicles that could be seen as desserts. And that could be, you know, a blueberry that could be, uh, you know, a goji berry that, you know, so on and so on. So yeah. I think it's also about looking at ways to diversify what we are consuming. Um, but also realizing that like, you know, smoking a cigarette that's a pretty that's something you can stop and that actually will decrease the potential of you going gray by so much um and equally looking at like alcohol consumption you know anything yeah. foreign to the body is going to age us faster yeah yeah makes a lot of sense and i think by this stage in my life i'm i've eaten so many blueberries i'm about 65 percent blueberry right now even Got the color scheme with my top to show it. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Well, I really don't know why I never thought of wearing a hat outdoors to protect my hair before, but that's definitely going to change after this conversation. And I'll link to more information about Jay and RA Gray below. Personally, I take a multivitamin supplement, which includes most of the nutrients discussed today, apart from iron and copper, which I hopefully get enough of from my diet. And I must say, touch wood, I haven't noticed much advance in my greying in recent years since improving my diet, exercise routine, and supplement intake. And so I suspect those factors really do play a strong part. As ever, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, including how you feel about graying hair and your own approach. Do you use a topical product or supplement? Let us know what works for you. And if you enjoyed this episode, then make sure to hit subscribe or follow so you don't miss future content from me. And you can listen to the Honest Channel podcast on the go through YouTube Music, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, and you'll find more information and advice from me around how to age well, look and feel good for longer on my website, honest.scot. For now, thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Bye.